McDonald's are actually used as breakfast. Morning, everybody. Morning. As some of you already know who have a Facebook page or have talked to Jag, last week, last week, week ago, week and a half ago, um, we had a surprise out in the pasture. And uh, go out in the morning and um, their pictures on Facebook will explain it all. Harry, I think, saw those. It was pretty funny. I'm dressed in my typical morning unusual garb when it rains. I was in the middle of dressing. Jay's being a little, PJ, PJ, hurry, 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 hurry. Come out here, come out here. We have a surprise. We have a new baby that wasn't due yet for 10 whole days. So she was out in the pasture. We went out and got her. She is a very beautiful silver buckskin. She is out of our miniature, miniature stallion and a full-grown uh, quarter horse mare. We did bring the mom and baby this morning. Her name, and I'll have to thank David for this clue. I was sitting there trying to figure out what to call her, and uh, Jim Hazelwood was on my mind. I thought, well, this is the ice cream line, okay? And so buttercream, and so all of her babies had to be named an ice cream. I thought, well, how can I get Jim Hazelwood's name into that? Because God laid it on my heart that this baby needs to be named after him in some form or fashion. And I thought, hazelnut. I remembered hazelnut. So her name is Hazelnut Surprise in honor of Jim Hazelwood. And she is a pistol. So y'all got to come out after church to see her, okay? All right. As I said yesterday, y'all if y'all don't have the Facebook or anything, come see me. I got pictures of her and her farm girl lingerie in that pony. <laughs> what can I say? I love embarrassing my wife. All right. Last Monday, a week ago tomorrow, we had a chicken killing at the house. Okay, how many of y'all are going to be grossed out? Good! Good, good! All right. So, yeah, we're at Cowboy Church, by golly. No. <laughs> two families. Chick, two families. And we had to pull the britches off of 32 chickens. And if you think that that is a small feat, I invite you out to try that. So, I learned... I learned a lot. Ladies, I'm sorry, but you are some morbid people. <laughs> now, they called me uh, and PJ because none of them had ever processed a chicken. See, I'm going to make it clean. Processed a chicken. None of them. And they said, hey, you'd like to go in, would you like to go in with us on 32 chickens? Well, yeah, go ahead. Good. You're going to have to teach us how to process them. Okay, so she brought seven kids out. Two of the kids were like, I ain't even gonna look at it, I ain't touching it, I ain't smelling it, I'm going to the other side of the house and I'll cook food for y'all who's working. All right, that's good, that's good. Bless her heart, the littlest girl, Kirsten's age, uh, nine, she said, I'll help, and she comes out there and the first one starts and she goes, eh. Uh, and she goes in there with PJ. So PJ had to entertain her. So we've got a 22 year old girl. I will call Morticia now. A 16 year old boy. Me. We're all three undressing them, pulling the bridges off. Their mom is cleaning them. And then PJ was doing the final cleaning, you know, all sanitizing and getting it all wrapped up and put in the freezer. All right, so I said, I can't do all of them, you know, by myself. So, you know, I'm going to have to teach y'all how to do this. The 16-year-old boy, no way. Uh-uh. You take it from living, breathing animal to hanging up, no, I don't do that. So the girl, I'll do it. She liked it. <laughs> no, okay, grab it in a ring the net. No, no, she really liked it. It kind of got me scared there. Yep. But after 
after that, we hung him up, and the 16-year-old boy, God love him, he's real tender. And he just couldn't quite remove the head. You know, she's tried. I said, here's the way you do it, just grab you and she liked it. <laughs> to the point where I grabbed two chickens, one for the brother and one for me. Yeah. And she grabbed her own chicken, wow, hung it up. I hung up the brothers and I'm I'm got mine in hand and hanging it up. I look and she goes, plop, plop, plop. <laughs> Could you wait till I get her hung? <laughs> She absolutely loved it. I was scared. I mean, I, as soon as the processing was over, I didn't have that knife. Thank you very much. I'll take this over here. And to be honest, it was really a blessing. I don't know, this sounds crazy, doesn't it? Country folk, what can you say? It was honestly a blessing working with these kids because not a lot of people know how food gets to the table. Amen. <laughs> I mean, you know, they think, okay, well, farmers go broke, no matter. I'm going to go get my stuff at the supermarket. <laughs> Hello, how do you think you got there? But it was real, real funny. Now, I don't pluck chickens, by the way. You know, my mom and my, my sisters and all that stuff say, well, why didn't you just, just pluck them? No, look, I skin animals. Chickens are the only thing people don't skin. I skin them even after they're cooked. I don't, that's gross. Coming from a guy who just cleaned a bunch of them, right? But I, that's it. So I, I skin it all, right? So here we are. We've got 32 chickens. We divided it in half. Before you get any ideas, before the day was over, our families got wind. Hey, I hear y'all got a bunch of chickens. Would y'all like to share? So between our children and our, my parents, we're going to be lucky to get a drumstick. <laughs> I feel like the, the, the hen with that you know, had asking for help to plant the corn and, and you know, weed the garden, water and, 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 and harvest and grain and make it into grain, but everybody wasn't ready to help eat. Right. Yeah, that's what I felt like. Where were y'all folks at? Well, you did it during the day. We would have come. Yeah, I'll bet. So, actually, that's going to be part of the sermon. Believe it or not. Oh. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. Chapter 11. Stay there. Okay. First Chronicles chapter 11. David has just become king. First Chronicles chapter 11. Starting in verse 10. These were the chiefs of David's mighty men. They together with all of Israel gave his kinship strong support of uh, to extend over, I can't even, I can't even read today. <laughs> These were the chiefs of David's mighty men. They, they together with all of Israel gave this kinship strong support to extend it over the whole land as the Lord had promised. This is the list of David's mighty men. I'm going to stop there, okay? To, before I go into all who, who they were and what they did. David had a group of people that surrounded him. Now I want you to look at the, at the, the correlation between David and the guys he called his mighty men. During the time when Saul was trying to kill David, and this is in 1 Samuel, during the time when Saul, the king, was trying to kill David, his son-in-law, and the, the, I guess you could say, the hero of Israel, David was fiercely loyal. Several times he had a chance to end the life of Saul. What did he do? No, I will not kill God's anointing. That's not my job. God said he is king. I'm not going to challenge that. He was humble, but he was very loyal to his king. 
He was a wonderful soldier. Excellent soldier. He killed many, many men in the battle. This is kind of sounding morbid too, isn't it? He was... He had killed a lion single-handedly. All these things that, that, that David had done throughout his life. Now let's look at his men. They were fiercely loyal to David. They, one even killed a lion single-handedly. They were mighty men in battle. The correlation between what David was and what he surrounded himself with is pretty awesome. I mean, similar. Not only that, these men were fiercely loyal to the one true living God, the God of Israel. Loyalty. Now, I, don't, I want you to know it says here that, that they, uh, as I get down here, they gave strong support to extend over the whole, uh, gave his kinship strong support. They supported him. I feel very blessed in my life because I have surrounded myself with mighty men. Here at the church, I have elders who not only support me, defend me, they admonish me when I need it. I have a wife who is a strong, mighty, not a mighty man, but a mighty woman, right? My father, my brother, my sisters, my mother, my mother-in-law, all people who are strongly loyal to God, who, when I need a kick in the backside, they're there with a the boot. When I need a prayer and a hug, they're there with that. They cry when I'm sad. They lift me up when I'm strong. And, and I just can't, can't tell you how blessed I feel because of that. Now, I've been studying about the mighty men for quite some time. And I always go back to this and, and, and I look at this. How does that fit us today? How does that fit us today? Do you have to be a pastor to have the mighty men surround? No! No! Because each one of the elders, they have mighty men surrounding them. I try to be one of them. The lay pastors. I mean, it's not just the leaders that have this. When when someone's hurting, the ladies, ladies don't surround you or the men surround you and say, you know, we got, you, we got your back. We hurt with you. What happens? What happens? Even David. Now this is a king, okay? He can have his head chopped off easily. And I just closed my Bible. <laughs> That's all right. It's going to be in... 2 Samuel. How about this? I've opened right up to it. 2 Samuel 21, 15 through 17. Now this is a king. Now they're talking to the king. Once again, there was a battle between the Philistines and Israel. David went down with his men to fight against the Philistines. And when he became exhausted, and the Shimei Benob one of the descendants of this other guy, whose bronze spearhead weighed 300 shekels and who was armed with a new sword, said he would kill David. But, boy, these guys have got some weird, really bad names here. Uh, Abashini, so I usually skip these things. Abashini, son of Zerah, came to David's rescue. He struck the Philistine down and killed him. Then David's men swore to him, saying, Never again will you go out to battle with us, so that the Lamb of Israel will not be extinguished. His men said, Look, dude, you're the king. You cannot go with us. Let us fight for you. You stay here and worry about running the country. Now, in the Bible here, it tells them they said this, Bluntly. I, I don't think that they would have said it any other way. You need to stay at the house. We got this. 
And how many times during a, a, a time of controversy in, in churches have, have people raised up against the pastor and, and the elders have always stood up. And, and I'm not talking about just this church. I'm talking about any church. The elders will stand up and say, look, you're the pastor. When this is all over with, you still got to be the pastor. Let us fight this. How many times when, when you're at home and you're, you're hurt and you're down and you, you have problems, have your friends said, don't worry about this. Let me take care of this. I got this. Now when I'm going back to the farm the farmstead here, when, when men get sick and get down, they can't get out and get their crop in. You see combines or, or, or tractors and stuff coming from all the other farms surrounding them. Let's get this guy's crop in. They are there. These are mighty men surrounding you, helping you, supporting you. I cannot tell you how important it is to have support. There are no lone rangers in Christianity. We as a people are herd animals. And we will go where we think we have the most support. How many of us have had friends, good close friends, by golly I'll stick with you through thick and thin and as soon as it gets a little thick you're going, hey where is everybody? That's not the mighty men I'm talking about. I'm talking about the ones that you put your finger in their face and tell them they're a sorry individual and they say, yes, I am. And then you get up against the wall and they're right there with you and so don't worry about it. I got this. Pointing the, uh, pointing the phrase right young man here. I got this. That's what... Christians do for Christians. Now I'm not talking about elders and lay pastors and, and pastors. And all. I'm just talking about plain Christians do for Christians. They're a family. You know, they say blood's thicker than water. Let me tell you something. I know a blood is thicker than anything there is on this earth. And that's the blood of Christ because it unites us all. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. When this Hello, I lost you there for a second. When his family had a problem, they had all this stuff that they could put in the freezer, but they had no idea how to get it there. They called on someone who knew. Because nobody had processed this stuff except PJ and I. They called someone who knew how to do it. As we're going through life, and the devil is beating us down, are we going to stand up against him? I don't think so. We're going to travel in packs and go against the devil. Amen? Amen? And who's going to lead that charge? The king. King of kings. Jesus Christ himself. You need to be part of his family. Because when you are part of his family, he's there. No matter what, you can shake your finger at him and say, you know, you're sorry you brought all this on me. And he said, yeah, it's all right, but I got it. Don't worry about it. God is there. His son will lift you up. No matter what the problem. But I need mighty men to surround me now. You got it. Bow your head. Say a prayer. Ask God to forgive you. Bring him into your heart. Be a member of his family. And he will not desert you. He says it all through the Bible. From Genesis to Revelations. I will never leave or forsake you. I will never leave Leave you in the dirt. Trust me, I'll lift you up and I'll carry you through it. When you need someone, he's there. When you don't need someone, he's there. When you think you've got it all by yourself, because he's carrying you. I cannot stress this too much. Are you here today and you say, man, I need... I need part of this mighty men. I need this thing. Are you here saying, I haven't got that support. I need that support. Where, where is it? If you are here and, and, and you don't have this and you want it, it's easy to get. It don't cost a dime. 
It's easy to get. It's just a prayer, a simple prayer. If you're here and you, you've received that salvation and you, you have that, that knowledge that you're going to heaven from earth and you've got Christ here, but you've just kind of fallen away and, and, and pushed Him aside, guess what? He's still there. Just start talking to Him. He hasn't left you. But if you do, if you need to know that you have salvation, you need to know that you have that, that relationship with Christ. I ask you to bow your head and pray with me. Lord, Lord, I'm broke. I've been out here on my own and I don't know what I'm doing. Lord, I, I need your hand, your mighty hand to, to get a hold of me. Lord, lift me up. Lord, I need that band of brothers that surround you. Lord, even Christ had his disciples. I pray that you give me that strength. Lord, I know that Christ died on the cross for me. And then he rose three days later and he lives with you today. And I ask you to just come into my heart, fill me up with your Holy Spirit, empty all the sin out. Lord, surround me with your love. I ask the saints in your name. Amen. Like I said, there's no Lone Rangers at all. Even in, even in uh, Hebrews, thank you. Hebrews 10, Paul said, Don't forsake the gathering yourselves together. Why? Because together we get strength from each other. Paul wrote all these letters. Uh, to different churches and he started admonishing them for things they had done you know, and, and telling them how much he loved them. But he wrote one letter not admonishing. He wrote one letter to give and gain strength from strong Christians. That was the letter of Romans. Read it. Read it. It's good stuff. Well, today, we're going to take of the Lord's Supper this is what Christ did with His mighty men. He gathered in the upper room. And on the eve of His death, He broke bread. The Bible says after supper, He broke bread. He passed around and said, This is my body that's been broken for you. Likewise, He took the cup and He said, This is, the, this is my blood. Blood of the new covenant is, is spread that is shed for you. As often as you eat of this and drink this cup, do it in remembrance of me. He said, remember the sacrifice that I made to buy this salvation for you. Christ died and He rose. If you've accepted that salvation, you've been, you've died to sin, People ask me, so if I accept Christ as my Savior and go out and shoot a bunch of people, then I'm, I'm good? Well, okay, yeah, but if you actually did ask Christ to save you, you wouldn't want to go out and shoot a bunch of people. You know, you'd want to surround yourself with people who don't want to go out and shoot a bunch of people. You want to live a godly life. Are you going to mess up? Absolutely, I do every day. But do not take this with something on your heart. If there's something in your heart that is causing you a separation from God, I ask you to bow your head and ask forgiveness of God. I ask you to make yourself right before Him. I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to give you a minute or so of time alone with God. And then I'll ask a blessing. Lord, I come to you today asking forgiveness of where I've fallen short. 
Lord, I thank you for the men and women who are gathered here together. Lord, to take of this Lord's Supper, this communion, in remembrance of you. Lord, I thank you for the men and women who have gotten it together. Thank you for the men who have served it. Lord, I thank you for the mighty warriors that are around us all. Lord, I pray that you bless this food to our bodies and our bodies to your service. In Jesus' name, amen. find anything in life more important than that prayer. More important to have Christ in your heart. I challenge you. It's not going to happen. If you don't know what I've been talking about up here, if you, that goes to the actual sermon, not the chicken killing. If you don't know what I've been talking about up here, I ask you to come inside. Sit down to talk to me. Don't worry about it. It don't go anywhere. People don't bother us when we're sitting down. It's just that if I'm standing up, I'm free game, come grab me. If you don't feel comfortable talking to me, my wife is here. The elders are here, their wives, lay pastors, somebody that has one of these books. Just grab a hold of somebody and say, what's he talking about? If you don't know, please don't leave here without knowing that you got the best fire insurance in the world. I guess Doug's up. All right.